So in this video we're going to apply what we learned about moments in two dimensions to a ladder based problem and these are quite common in the A level. So the question says a uniform rod AB of mass 10 kilograms and length 2.4 meters rests with A on rough horizontal ground and that there implies that there's going to be friction. It says the rod makes an angle of 60 degrees with a horizontal as shown in the diagram and is supported by a fixed smooth peg P. The distance AP is 1.6 meters. See the diagram. So part one, calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the peg on the rod. So first of all, let's draw a labeled diagram with all the forces on. So let's start with the weight of the ladder or the weight of the rod. That there is 10 kilograms, so its weight is 10 G, 10 G. Also, the peg is pushing this rod up perpendicular to its point of contact. And we're going to call that reaction with a subscript P, which means reaction at P. But then there's other forces. There's, for example, the normal contact force that the ground's, uh, that the ground's got to push the ladder up. So what I'm going to do is call that R with a subscript G. So that stands for the reaction at the ground. And then finally, what this ladder wants to do is it wants to slip this way. Someone standing on the ladder potentially could slip that way. Therefore, friction stopping that from happening since the system's in equilibrium. So I'm going to call the friction F for now. We don't know if the friction's maximal yet, so I'm not going to write F max. We only know that friction's keeping the system stable. Right, so what we're going to do, answer the question, we've got to uh, calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the peg on the rod. So we certainly do not want to take moments about the peg P, otherwise we lose the force at P. What we should do is take moments about A, where I consider clockwise to be positive. That means I get to disregard this unknown here and this unknown here at A if I take moments about it because the distance of those forces from the pivot is zero. So let's take all the forces now going clockwise. Well, the only one about this pivot here that's going to turn it clockwise is this 10G. Now the perpendicular distance to the line of action of the 10G, and let's illustrate that. So the line of action of the 10G is here. The perpendicular distance is this distance here. So we've got 10G times the perpendicular distance, which is halfway up the uh, halfway up the rod, which is 1.2 meters times 1.2 cos 60. So this distance here, 1.2 is the hypotenuse, and it's the adjacent, so it's cos 60. And now looking at the anti-clockwise, well, this is the line of action of the force here. So the perpendicular distance goes down this ladder, down this rod here. So it's simply 1.6 meters. So take RP times 1.6. So RP times 1.6. And we know that the total moment sum to zero, which means that 1.6 RP equals 10g times 1.2 cos 60 and that in turn means that rp equals 10g times 1.2 cos 60 all divided by 1.6 so if i put that in the calculator i get 10 times 9.8 10g times 1.2 cos 60 divided by 1.6 equals 147 over 4, which is equal to 36.75 newtons. And that's part one done. We've calculated the magnitude of the force exerted by the peg on the rod. Next part, it said find the least value of the coefficient of friction between the rod and the ground needed to maintain equilibrium. Well, this is describing a situation where it's in limiting equilibrium. 
So the least value of the coefficient of friction would be, would be just when this ladder is on the point of slipping. So for the purposes of this now, instead of friction here, we can call it F max. So F max. And we know that the maximum friction that occurs is equal to mu times R, where in this case, R is the reaction of the ground, so it's Rg. So the first thing I need to do is to resolve this Rp here, so horizontally and vertically. Well, notice that by GCSE angle laws, this angle here is also equal to 60. So this one here is equal to 30. So now I've got a triangle where this one's the hypotenuse. Well, we've got vertically this one here is RP sine 30 and this one RP cos 30 where we know RP is 36.75. So resolving horizontally the whole system, no more moments. Resolving horizontally, to the right we've got F max, which is mu RG. Take all the forces acting to the left. RP, which is 36.75 cos 30, equals zero. Now let's resolve vertically. We've got, going upwards, Rg plus 36.75, that's Rp, sine 30, take all the forces going down, take 10g equals 0. So that means that Rg equals 10g, take 36.75 sine 30 equals so 10g take 36.75 sine 30 equals 637 over 8 or 79.625 79.625 newtons we're almost there now because now there's only one unknown. If we sub this into the other equation, if we sub RG into there, I get mu times 79.625 equals 36.75 cos 30, which means that mu equals 36.75 cos 30. 30 over 79.625 equals, putting that in the calculator, 36.75 cos 30 divided by 79.625 equals 0 0.3997 or 0 0.400. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.